not the blue light. Darn it. Hello, my name is Marta and I'm an incoming freshman at the University of Chicago studying biochemistry. I did the IB in my high school in Spain. I had no idea where to start when I was writing my math IA. I didn't know what a mathematical exploration was. I was so confused. I needed help. Despite hitting absolute rock bottom while drafting my math IA, I'm so proud of the end result and hopefully this can be some sort of like source of inspiration. Even if you don't know what you're doing, you'll make it. The math I seems very intimidating, but you can do it. So while breaking down the process of writing the math I, I'll always refer to the five criteria and kind of show you how you can embed them throughout your IA. The five criteria are A, mathematical communication, B, presentation, C, personal engagement, D, reflection, and E, use of mathematics. Something to keep in the back of your mind while choosing an IA topic is that you need to essentially reach a specific number. You're answering a question and the answer to that question should be a number, whether that be an area, a probability, it could be a function, an equation, but you need to have an answer in your IA. So make sure you're familiar with the topic and that the math is taught within the curriculum because if you don't understand it, you won't be able to reach this number and your IA will not have a conclusion. What people usually do and what I certainly did initially is look up best math IA topics on Google. Usually the top results are things that are quite overused. I've seen many examples of people optimizing the area of food packaging and finding the ratio between music notes. And of course, these aren't bad ideas, they're really good ideas, but it's important to give them your own personal twist. The IB doesn't really grade you on originality, but they do grade you on how much you're engaged in the topic and how much you make it your own. I know someone that did Volume of Revolution, and I also saw this on a video, which I will link down below. But basically, you can take an object and outline it on Desmos, and you'll have different functions. And you can integrate the functions to find volume of evolution, revolution, not evolution. <laughs> Ultimately, if you end up using an idea like this one that has been used before, just make sure to personalize it. And you can, for example, look up other real world applications that use this mathematical method and then jump from there. It's also important to consider criterion E, use of mathematics, when choosing a topic because you're graded on whether your IA is commensurate with the course, which means that it has to be HL and it has to cover one of the five topics in the syllabus. So I would avoid choosing a topic such as statistics because this specific unit doesn't have an HL component to it in analysis and approaches. Disclaimer, it's obviously not prohibited to do a stats topic. Just make sure that you explore new and unfamiliar math that's at a high level. I was saying this because the curriculum and analysis and approaches doesn't dive too deep into stats like other math courses in the IB. I think there are two good general ways of picking a topic. The first one is going from a general interest. My teacher made us do mind maps with like different hobbies and interests that you have and see how they can connect to math. This is the mind map that I made. Wow! One thing that kind of stood out to me that I think is kind of a good idea, I do not know if this has been used or not. One of my interests was dance and I put plotting a stage direction on the Cartesian plane. I think that's pretty cool. I didn't really use this that much, but for some people it may be helpful. The second way to choose a topic is by looking at the word problems in your textbook. This is what I did. I have the Pearson textbook and this is quite effective because word problems show you how the math that you're learning in your class can be used in real life. I remember that I saw a word problem that was related to like the concentration of medicine in a patient's bloodstream. From there I looked up on Google how to model the concentration of a drug in a person's bloodstream and I found a differential equation I could solve. So if you find a word problem that has an interesting application, research on Google and see what you can find. 
So this is my advice, take it with a grain of salt, but I highly recommend investigating a topic related to differential equations because not only is it an HL topic, which will give you those points for criterion E, it's also a topic that has several real life applications. And even if you haven't learned if EQs yet in class, with a bit of background and integration, you could probably learn it in a couple of days, but you only really need to know first order, homogeneous, and separable to EQs. I think it's worth taking a little bit of time learning how to solve them because there are so many different applications. My textbook and my teacher's slideshows had several word problems related to differential equations that basically give you potential math ideas. Many people have used Newton's law of cooling, but other applications of differential equations include predicting chemical reaction rates or modeling the current in an electric circuit. One word problem that I thought was quite interesting was related to water leaking from a tank. If you use something like this, you can see how you can minimize the time it takes for water to drain from the tank by changing different dimensions. That's a potential idea. I think there's something called Bernoulli's equation. Bernoulli. Well, I'll link a video down below, but there's a lot you can do with calculating the rate of water flow. Another word problem was related to logistic growth, and you can use that to predict the increase of a certain population and its carrying capacity. When you solve a differential equation, you're solving for a function that models something. So I highly recommend it simply because you're going to have a very focused research question and a clear purpose in your, I in your IA. Basically, I solved a differential equation that includes the rate of change of concentration of a drug in the bloodstream in terms of time, and you solve for the function of concentration versus time. And the differential equation has several different constants, and that's because the differential equation works for different drugs, but you can evaluate the constants for specific numbers that are unique to a drug. So for example, there are constants such as bioavailability, um, volume, dosage, and I plugged in the values for amoxicillin, which is an antibiotic. I plugged the values specific to amoxicillin into the function, and that gave me the graph for concentration versus time. And the importance of this is that you can see whether the concentration surpasses a certain limit of toxicity, depending on the dosage that you plugged in to the function. In the end, I found the area under the curve because that gives you something called the distribution of the drug or the exposure to the body. Every drug has a certain distribution number that cannot be passed because if not, it would be considered toxic. So by finding the area under the curve for amoxicillin, I could see whether the dosage I plugged in was safe or not. Your introduction consists of the rationale. You talk about the relevance of your topic and you give an overview of the whole investigation. And this is crucial for communication because you're introducing your topic. You can't get too technical, it can't be too complicated. It's important that your introduction is concise so that your examiner isn't lost already at the beginning. Many people try to knock down the personal engagement marks in the introduction by writing the significant meaning that this topic has in their life. And obviously it's important to explain why you chose this topic and why it's important to you, but that shouldn't be your whole introduction. You should make it a couple of sentences. I think I did three to four sentences talking about why I found this topic interesting. Really what they wanna see is the relevance. Personal engagement is more about your ability to problem solve rather than the personal connection that you have to this topic. If you explain concepts through diagrams, charts, models, or tables, you're showing personal engagement. This is extremely important for presentation because it says here in the rubric that you need to define key terms. You may have to explain some concepts that are, are not related to math just so that your examiner gets a little bit more context to your investigation. But you have to be very careful with this. In my first math IE draft, I was very descriptive with the biological processes behind why the equation works. In the first draft, I said, during elimination, there are two main processes that remove the drug from the bloodstream, which causes a decrease in the concentration. 
The first process is metabolism, which is when the drug crosses the membranes of cells. This is not necessary. Yes, I need to explain two very important concepts and terms in my math I, which are absorption and elimination because I want to show how the graph of concentration at first there's an increase which is when the drug is being absorbed into the bloodstream and then decrease which is when it's being eliminated from the bloodstream but you have to explain the mathematical interpretation you can't go into depth on why this happens I start explaining that this is because of metabolism that's not necessary and that's very important to keep in mind if you're doing a math I that's related to a natural science, if it's related to econ, if it's related to literally any other discipline, you have to make sure that you focus on the math. You cannot be very technical in the terms. What I recommend doing in your background information is include a table. Which, by the way, tables do not need to be double spaced. The whole I has to be double spaced except tables, which I was not aware of. So <laughs> my table is double spaced, which is quite painful. I remember being frustrated about that because it has to be 20 pages and I went over the page limit at first. I included a table to define all my terms and I think this is quite helpful for the examiner to refer back to in case they forget what a certain variable or constant means. My very first table in the investigation includes key terms. I explain where they come from. For example, absorption is related to the half-life of a drug. Same with elimination. I made sure to include the units for each constant slash variable. And in my background, I explain very concisely what absorption and elimination are without being too technical with the biological terms. Keep in mind that this is a math I and do not start ranting on all of the biological, physical, chemical mechanisms that are occurring because that's not the point. You need to contextualize your IA in the background information, but the bulk of your IA is going to be your mathematical method, your, your calculations and all of that stuff, so don't take up too much space explaining all your terms. So now on to the cream of the Oreo. After your background is the most important part of your IA, which is your investigation. You are explaining the method that you're using, you're explaining all your calculations. I basically divide my investigation into several parts. I start by explaining the differential equation and how the terms are related to each other. So throughout the investigation part of it, I have several different titles that explain each step of solving the differential equation. Throughout my IA, I included tables to demonstrate the standard form of a certain process and then the way that I'm applying this method to the equation that I'm solving. In total, I have like 11 tables and that really helped me communicate what I'm doing as I solve the equation. Underneath each table, I talk about why I'm doing what I'm doing, which is the most important part. You have to not just show what you're doing, you have to explain it. And for example, in the first step, I say that I'm putting this equation into standard form because that makes one side of the equation look similar to the result of a product rule when differentiating. So as you can see, I always use the standard formula and how I'm applying this formula to my investigation. You have to be very clear with the steps. You cannot really skip any steps when you're doing your math. I, I do want to reiterate the fact that even simple calculations should be included. Things that you would think the examiner should know, you still have to explain why you're doing them in your math I, which is kind of frustrating. In the first draft, my teacher circled so many things and put so many question marks. It's very important in terms of communication to show exactly what you're doing and why you're doing, even if it is the most simple thing in your IA. So for example, my teacher circled the exponent of the integrating factor and she just circled and put Y when I integrated it. It was literally a simple integration problem. And I was really confused. I was like, this woman knows this. She should know this. But I still explained that. And finally, I take the values of amoxicillin 
and I plug them into the solution of the differential equation and I graphed the specific function that I got. My final step in the investigation was finding the area under the curve and something that I did was use two different methods, one of them being the trapezoid rule, which is when you divide the graph into trapezoids and add the areas of the trapezoids. And you do this by using discrete values of the function. And then I use integration to find the area under the curve. And I explain why you would use both methods. At the end, I found the distribution and saw that it was below the level of distribution that would be considered toxic. So I concluded that the dosage that I had plugged in to the differential equation was safe. And something that's really important is reflection throughout your IA. Reflection isn't something that you only talk about in the conclusion. A lot of people include the bulk of their reflection in the conclusion, and reflection should be demonstrated throughout the um, paper. You can show reflection throughout your investigation by explaining your reasoning and why you would do something. That's showing that you're reflecting. And if you make a correction or decide to use an alternative method, that also shows reflection. It's very important for presentation to use the right notation. Using math type is really helpful. I don't really like Google Docs embedded software with like notation because it's missing quite a few things and it doesn't look as neat as math type. You can add it as an extension, I think, to both Google Docs and to Word. And throughout your investigation, just make sure to include many graphs that you can create on Desmos. In your conclusion, you summarize your IA, you summarize your results. I talk about the percentage error, I compare the theoretical value of the distribution of amo amoxicillin versus the value that I got in my graph. You talk about the accuracy of your model and you also interpret the model or the results that you found. And one thing I did was find the maximum point on the graph and I talked about how at this point the rate of absorption is equal to the rate of elimination. I talk about at what time this occurs and what the concentration is at this point in the graph. So after analyzing my results, I include my evaluation and extensions. And in this part, you should be showing a lot of reflection. You should be talking about errors and you should be talking about what you can do to fix those errors. A possible extension to this investigation is making dosage a function instead of a constant because amoxicillin is not always taken in a tablet or in a capsule. If it's taken in a tablet or a capsule, dosage is constant because it's taken all at once. But if the drug is, for example, taken through an intravenous needle, an IV, that would mean that the dosage is constantly changing over time. So I talk about how I could potentially correct my differential equation to mimic this real life situation. I talk about how I could, for example, use a trigonometric function instead of a constant and how this would lead me to using a very similar method, but instead I would have to use integration by parts in one of my steps. And I also talk about how this differential equation could be used for other drugs and by plugging in the constants and values for other drugs. I could compare the concentration versus time function of different drugs with different factors, for example, solubility. In your conclusion, you should be diving really deep into what you can do to make your method better, and you can simply wrap up your IA after this. I basically conclude by saying, I can conclude that a dosage of 250 milligrams is a healthy and safe dosage of amoxicillin. And that basically is the answer to the aim I was talking about initially. You should show at the end of your IA that the purpose was fulfilled and that you met your goal by using your mathematical model. Well guys, that's it for today's video. If you have any questions, just comment down below. I hope this was somewhat helpful. I think that the math I it sounds like a very daunting task. It doesn't have to be too complicated. Just make sure that you come up with an idea ahead of time. I would say that the math I probably takes approximately a week to complete. You know, if you're working on it every day for a couple of hours, an hour or two, you can probably get it done. I will make sure to cite all the textbooks that I referred to in this video and include some links to videos that I found very helpful.
helpful. Anyway, goodbye. Have a good one. <laughs>